frequently when you read, you want to read like a detective, but when you write, you want to write like a lawyer. So when you read a text, you're breaking it down, you're looking at the pieces, just the way investigators might analyze a crime scene. You're trying to figure out what's going on, what the logic is, what happened, and that involves looking at the little pieces and seeing how they fit together. And when you go to write, you've done the thinking. At this point, you're the lawyer in court presenting your findings to your reader. This man is guilty. And just like a lawyer wouldn't want his or her jury to have any doubt about what their main point is, you don't want your readers to be in doubt of what your point is. So let's say we're a lawyer, our thesis, that main point or main claim we're making might be the defendant is guilty. Then you'd wanna take your jury, your reader, logically step by step through the sub points that led you to that overall conclusion. He's guilty because he has a motive. Then you'd explain what the motive is. He's guilty because he was found near the crime scene. Then you'd explain why that was relevant. He's guilty because his alibi is false. You explain how you know it's false. So your main point should run through this entire argument and you should be leading your readers or your jury through these subpoints that prove that overall point. When we're writing an argument, and by argument, I simply mean making a point about a text, we're the lawyers clearly laying out our logic for our readers. And we want our structure to hold together like this, rather than just being a jumble of uh, loose ideas that don't really relate. So let's say you're writing a rhetorical analysis. The main question you're answering is, answering is, is the text an example of effective rhetoric? Why or why not? And when you've answered that question, you'll come up with your thesis statement. The next step then is coming up with a logical plan for proving that thesis statement. So let's say this is, this is my thesis statement. This speech effectively fulfills its purpose by doing A, B, and C. Well, in this case, the plan for writing is kind of baked right into the thesis statement. You can put your thesis up front and make it clear for your reader somewhere in the introduction. And then your body paragraphs could prove point A, could prove point B, could prove point C. Pretty easy, right? Now, what if you had a thesis statement like this? Although the speech fails at X, it ultimately succeeds because of Y. Well, what do you need to prove here? Seems to me the first thing you want to prove is that the speech fails at X. And then the next thing you'd want to prove is that the text succeeds because of Y. Devote part of your paper to the one, devote part of the paper to the other. And note that I've got the little however there. If you're doing contrasting ideas, you're absolutely gonna need a nice strong transition to let your reader know that you've switched from uh, talking about one thing and moved on to another. Now let's take an example from a more perfect union, um, Obama's 2008 speech. Now here's a, a thesis statement I might come up with. Obama's speech, a more perfect union, is an example of effective rhetoric because he successfully uses logos, pathos, and ethos to communicate his message. Now for some people, this thesis statement might, might be a little bit broad, but you know what, I would be perfectly happy if you could pull out examples of all three things from any text. That would be okay with me. In this case, again, it looks like you've got your, your plan baked right into the thesis statement. You got three things there that you're promising your reader you're gonna talk about. Well then when you set up your outline, those three things need to be in it. Even if I have a good idea where I'm gonna go in my writing, I find it very useful to make a plan, an outline. It's just like, even though you may know what you want the, the building to look like, you still need a blueprint to make sure you're gonna construct it successfully. So I'll get out a piece of paper or I'll pull up a document and I'll mark out some sections like this. I know I'm gonna have an intro, I know I'm gonna have a body, I know I'm gonna have a conclusion. And I know I'm gonna have certain things in, in each of these areas. So in my intro, I'll probably have some kind of hook that relates to my thesis. By background, I mean, I'm gonna let my reader know what the text I'm talking about is and what the particular uh, perspective I'm gonna take on it is. And of course, I'm gonna let my reader know my thesis. Then my conclusion I know is gonna contain some kind of takeaway for the reader. I'm gonna answer the so what question. You just read this paper about this text. So what, what's the larger point here? I can fill in my thesis. Obama's speech, a more perfect union is an example of effective rhetoric because he, success, blah, blah, blah. he successfully uses logos, pathos, and ethos to communicate his message. And in this case, because I've got that roadmap sort of built into my thesis, it's really easy to block out what's gonna be in my body. So these might be my topic sentences. Obama successfully appeals to listeners' logic. In addition, Obama successfully appeals to listeners' emotions. Most importantly, Obama successfully presents himself as authoritative and credible. Now let's say that we have a thesis statement like this. Perhaps the most effective aspect of the speech is the way Obama uses specific examples of real people to illustrate his larger concepts about America. Now I know where I'm going in this paper. I know the main point I wanna prove in this paper, I should say, but there's no roadmap built into the thesis statement. 
In this case, I need to look at the thesis statement and think to myself, what do I need to prove in order to prove this? And in this case, I'm going to think about the specific examples he uses. He talks about himself. He talks about Reverend Wright. He mentions his grandmother. And he, he tells the story of someone named Ashley at the end of his paper. So it seems to me that a logical way to lead my reader through this point would be to look at each of these examples and what each example shows, how these specific examples take really fuzzy concepts like ra about race and justice and um, American promise and, and, and makes those fuzzy concepts real. So in my body, again, maybe I'll devote a paragraph to talking about Obama and his background. I'll devote a paragraph talking about Reverend Wright and Obama's grandmother. And I'll devote a paragraph talking about Ashley. And I know the conclusion I want to want to make here. I want to point out that America is diverse. We've got this tangled history that has brought some problems, but connection, change, and unity are necessary and possible. And I think that the the specific examples he uses shows this. Now, I do like to have the wording of my claims laid out. So I'll probably do this. This is looking just at the body now, so I can zoom in a little closer. I might say for my first topic sentence, my first mini claim, Obama's own story illustrates the degree of diversity that exists in America. Then for my next paragraph, Reverend Wright and Obama's grandmother, the real life examples of Reverend Wright and Obama's grandmother show that diversity can create conflict. And then finally, Ashley's story shows that connection between people of different ages, genders, and races is possible. We can perfect our nation and unite in a common cause. And if I just look at those topic sentences there, those hold together to prove my point. I think I've done what I need to do to prove my point if I can prove each of those subpoints. Now, before I actually get down to writing, I'm going to go to my text and I'm going to find the specific details I need so that within each paragraph, I can prove that point. So each paragraph almost follows the pattern of the paper as a whole. You make that clear claim, then you go through and you give the, the evidence, you explain it, give the evidence, explain it, give the evidence, explain it as many times as you need to do in order to make that point. And then you kind of reemphasize your point, close your paragraph. Again, just looking at one potential body paragraph here, this is what I might put. I've got my topic sentence. I'll go through the text and then I'll just jot down the things I'm seeing there that prove that point. And I usually am not going to use full sentences. If there's something that I see that's really quotable, then I'll, I'll write that down word for word. I'll make sure I keep it in quotation marks. So later on when I go to write, I don't think that I wrote that great line myself. And if there are page numbers, I'll use them. Once I've gone through this process, then the actual writing should be pretty easy. Or let's not kid ourselves. maybe not easy, but easier. Writing is complicated, right? You're trying to think about how everything works as a whole, how the big pieces fit together. You're also having to think about the evidence you want to use, and you have to put that all into nice words. So if you've gone to the, the effort beforehand to figure out what you want to say and what evidence you want to use, that when you get to the actual writing and you're facing that blank page, all you really need to do is worry about putting the stuff into nice sentences that sound good. Okay, let's take a look at one more potential thesis statement. Perhaps the most striking aspect of the speech is the way Obama uses his own identity and his personal experiences as a metaphor for his larger points about the promise and problems of America and to prove that he can be a, a good leader. Now, if I am working with this thesis, it's actually kind of like I'm talking about the, the first point in my previous example, but I think I could write a whole paper here. Now, again, I don't feel like I've got the roadmap baked into this thesis statement, so I can think, what do I need to prove in order to prove this point? Well, I need to talk about how his own identity relates to America, the fact that he's he's got this diverse background, he's had a lot of different experiences. Okay, and then maybe I need to talk about some of his own personal experiences that he lists. So first of all, who he is and what he's experienced. So I kind of have two ideas going on here. I can build my body around those two ideas, the who he is, the what he's experienced, and what those things say about America. So perhaps my first paragraph will be Obama's identity is a metaphor for American promise. He's someone who shows that diversity is possible, that it can be united in one person. And then his personal experiences, what he's seen with his reverend, what he's seen with his grandmother, um, those show some of the problems that can come with diversity. This is what my outline might be for a full paper based on that. Again, I typically am not using full sentences, just little snippets. But I've gone through, I've thought about what I want to say, I've gotten back to the text, I've pulled the specific examples I want to use, and then 
with this in hand, it would just be a matter of putting these ideas into sentences that sound nice. Again, I think the metaphor of being a lawyer is very useful. You've done the crime scene investigation. You've figured out who the guilty party is. Now you need to present that in a way that's clear and logical that other people can follow, right, like a lawyer. But we got enough lawyers in the world, so perhaps a better analogy for the process might be this. You're the one who sees how pieces fit together, and you can show that to the reader. Good thinking and a good plan can help.